Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Wright, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Had a patient who attended with bilateral ear infections. We're in the left ear at the moment, just uh, pre-procedure examination. The ear canal itself is a clue, and both ears, this is true for both ears, both ear canals are free from occluding earwax or debris. However, um, in the left eardrum, so the previous ear, the eardrum um, had some granulation tissue. You'll see that once I've cleaned the ear out, and there's a lot of pus discharge on the eardrum itself. On the right ear, so the eardrum you just saw, there was a layer of thick dead skin lining the eardrum itself and both ears is a bit of eczema what we call otitis externa so just starting off with the left ear the patient has got this it's non-occluding it's peripheral dry crusted hard earwax so i'm just using uh, a zona suction probe standard zona suction probe just delicate it's a bit of skin that's got in the way there so just it's good to view for the moment. So just gently peeling this crusted skin off the roof of the ear canal. And once I've loosened it, I can gently bring it forwards and out of the ear. And you'll see when it comes out, I just how crusted it is. It's still taking the shape of the ear canal itself. It's got that curvature. So it's still still can't get a clear view of the eardrum, but what I'm trying to do first is just clear up the entrance. Again, some bit of dry crusted wax on the posterior lateral canal wall so lateral means near the entrance of the ear posterior means the back part of the ear, ear canal so at the base here you've got this glossy thick layer of skin um, again it's quite crusted a bit tricky to remove but we did manage it and the eardrum is very wet on the right hand side you'll see a red mark that's some granulation tissue so granulation tissue is um, when not only does it occur in your eardrum, it can occur in your ear canal, but other parts of the body. So when your your eardrum, in this case, it's it's recovering from an infection, and as it's recovering, you're getting a buildup of connective tissue, and this connective tissue starts having its own blood vessel, blood and blood supply, hence the red appearance. So granulation tissue generally occurs during the healing process, and so we know the patient's eardrum is infected; otherwise, they wouldn't have had this granulation tissue. Just wanted to clear that the the base of the ear canal first is a bit tricky, so I'm just using a fine end gauge, and I think I'm gonna go to the eardrum now and suction all that fluid, all that pus discharge off the eardrum. So you can see that the majority of this fluid pus discharge is on the anterior part of the eardrum. So in the case of the left ear, the anterior part is the left side, and it's going to be really, really delicate. So the eardrum's very thin. Uh, I believe it's uh, 0.1 millimetres in thickness. So it's, it's like a piece of cling film. You don't want to penetrate it and perforate it. So already this part of the eardrum is more visible. Patient has got quite a narrow ear, but even, nonetheless, even with, with the endoscope, we can suction. We've got full access to the inferior recess. So the inferior recess is a little trench cave at the base of the ear canal near the eardrum. And the anterior recess is a, is a, a, a recess... Um, vertical recess to the left of the eardrum in the case of the left ear and you can quite often it's like hit little hidden um, hideaways where you can get wax or skin or fluid that can hide in there it's very difficult to spot never mind uh, remove from the inferior and anterior recess but managed to clear that and you can see that granulation tissue the red spot is a lot more visible now the patient has been to their GP on several occasions who just keep recommending and prescribing hydrogen peroxide drops so um, I've recommended some patients the patients some over-the-counter treatments on acetic acid and of course to visit the GP if they're still symptomatic so the eardrum's more or less cleared now and I just want to remove this residual crusted skin we're going to be really gentle on the bony part of the ear canal so it's almost like that game of operation. You want to really avoid um, contact with the bony part because it can be uncomfortable. So this is where you need a really steady hand, just gliding over this crusted skin, trying to lift it off the canal wall. Because it's quite tricky, I'm trying to just reposition the fine end gauge into another part. You can just see how glossy it is. So when it's glossy like that, it means it's crusted. It's almost like a mirror, you can see the reflection of it. So just some dead keratin, just peeling this off the eardrum. So 
So I'm just going to go back in with a fine end. So I'm just going to the anterior canal wall, trying to lift this, peel this off there. And eventually I do manage. Just wanted to avoid putting any drops in there just to soften this because the patient has already got a bit of otitis externa. We're just gonna keep the ears dry as possible. You can see I'm gently making some headway now. So once I've lifted this, it's almost like a piece of plastic when you when it came out, it's got sharp edges, it can be quite uncomfortable in the ear. There we are. So there's a bit of dampness at the, the inferior recess. I'm just going back in, just to suction that up. There's some dead carrot in here, just lifting that, peeling that off. So I've advised the patient to obviously use um, acetic acid spray and to visit the doctor if they're still symptomatic. They're over the moon today because they've been suffering from this for a couple of weeks. But this granulation tissue doesn't resolve. And after the course of the treatment, just to revisit the, the doctor or nurse just so they can have a quick examination. And... Uh, it's the, the, the rule with anyone really, but more so if you've got a otitis externa, you really want to avoid water in your ear. Water is the arch enemy of the ear. So the left ear is done, just onto the right side. So this ear is a bit more challenging in some respects because there was a thick layer of skin uh, on the posterior segment of the tympanic membrane of the eardrum. I'm just cleaning up the entrance. The patient's got loads of dry skin flakes here. And this is all skin, it's not wax, it's all dead keratin. You can see the, the fresh layers of skin there as well. So that's the eardrum in the distance. You can see that she's, we know already she's got some tympanosclerosis, some scar tissue, that's the white patches. Yeah, I'm just using the so on the suction probe, just trying to get some purchase. And it's again, that game of operation, we want to, make, we want to really avoid any contact. Especially in the inner two thirds of the ear canal, the outer third of the ear canal is cartilaginous, it's semi flexible, semi sensitive, so you can apply some pressure. The inner two thirds of the ear canal, it's, it's a very thin layer of skin, less than 0.1 millimeters in thickness, directly adhered to the bony part of the ear canal. Uh, so if you make contact with that, because that skin's so thin and delicate, you make direct contact with the bone, it's very uncomfortable for the patient. So I've just attached a fine end gauge. It's just like the left ear. I'm just trying to per get some purchase on this and lift it. So the patient has got some quite narrow ear canals. They have got a history of chronic ear infections. I can tell, uh, especially by looking at the right ear, that the right ear is a lot more dull, a bit more inflamed. What's, you'll see it once we've cleared all this dead skin debris and the tympanosclerotic patches. Skin, tympanosclerosis is scar tissue, or, um, more or less. It's um, calcium, calcification, so calcium deposits. It normally occurs in the middle membrane of the eardrum. So the eardrum has three membranes, the outer lateral layer, is the same skin that lines the inner two thirds of the ear canal, so we call that stratified squamous epithelial keratinous skin. The middle layer of the eardrum is what gives it its rigidity, it's the fibr fibrous layer, the connective tissue, and the inner layer of the eardrum is the mucosa, so it's the skin that lines the middle ear. And through any form of trauma, whether it be acoustic, barrow trauma, suppressor change, acoustic trauma, physical trauma, um, you can get a buildup of calcium plaque and we call that tympanosclerosis. In some, most of my clients who have tympanosclerosis, it's not that uncommon to see a lot of elderly patients with tympanosclerosis. Um, also younger clients who've had grommets, that the tympanosclerosis of the scar tissue doesn't always affect one's hearing. 
of, of course, if you've got excessive temporal sclerosis, the eardrum becomes stiffened. And when the eardrum becomes stiffened, sounds that enter the ear canal reflect off the eardrum back out of the ear. Uh, we call that a conductive hearing loss. So this dead keratin, um, we're directly on the eardrum now. And you can see uh, anteriorly, so to the right, uh, in the right corner. So we call that the superior anterior quadrant. There's a lot of scar tissue visible here. And this is where the majority of the skin is. And you'll see, I'm going to just peel it off the eardrum in a moment. So underneath this, you've got the fresh layer of skin, the outer layer of skin of the eardrum. So if you remember before, I mentioned that the eardrum has three membranes. The outermost layer is the same skin that lines the ear canal. And as that skin dies and sheds, it should naturally migrate outwards out of the ear. Uh, it's almost think about it like a conveyor belt motion. So your ear secretes dead, you've got dead skin in the ear, it dies, it sheds, moves sideways out of the ear, then you've got a fresh under, under underneath layer. But this skin hasn't migrated. It's just died and it's just remained on the eardrum and it's crusted. And you can just about see on the left hand side, when I lift this skin up, there's a bit of tympanous sclerosis on the left as well. You can see there's a bit of scar tissue there. It's really difficult to remove because it's stubborn. Um, I'm peeling it, but it's not moving any further. So I'm just using a different angle of attack. I think I'm going to use in a moment at least <coughs> so, uh, full zone suction so at the moment I am using a fine end whenever I work closer to the eardrum I just prefer using a fine end it's less noisy less traumatic so if we do come in contact with the eardrum it's less likely to cause any injury and the patient did not feel a thing did not flinch it's very comfortable it was not poking and prodding the eardrum got a steady hand, the patient, the patient is none the wiser where we are. So you don't really want to use an ear hook because we have to graze the ear canal Even with forceps. There's nothing really there for me to prise onto. So I'm just persisting with suction. I don't really want to use drops if, if at all possible because the patient has got a bit of otitis externa. So I think here I've just quickly gone in with the full zone of suction probe just for that edit suction power and see it's just crusted over the handle of malleus the mal um, the hammer bone and just see how still the patient is as well there we are so the eardrum's visible there's a bit of skin there left i think i'm i think i do manage to remove that when i was see i can't remember actually if i'm truth be told yeah, so it's just gone back in with a fine end now. You see, I'm putting some gentle pressure on the eardrum, but it's very gentle. The patient does not feel it at all. So I managed to remove that. There's a bit of dead skin anteriorly. Just going upwards and peeling that off. And there's a bit on the roof of the eardrum, the attic region. I'm on the roof of the ear canal, just going to gently peel that. So the patient is feeling lo lo loads and loads better post procedure. Just advise them to avoid water in the ears, don't poke in the ears. They're going to use some acetic acid spray and they're going to revisit their doctor uh, after a week just to make sure everything's clear. If not, the doctor can pres prescribe some, some ear spray, some antibiotic spray. Yes, yeah, so if you can if you remember what it looked like before, if, if not, you can rewind to the beginning of the video. I had the pre-procedure examination video, both the right and left ear.